On this episode of TFL Off-Road, it's Little versus Double XL. I've got a Canon Maverick X3 and a Unimog Mercedes, and we're gonna tackle the St. John's Trail up here in the Rocky Mountains in early June. Which one is best, Canon am or Unimog? Let's find out. All right, guys, so we moved about, what, uh, half a mile up the trail. We're at about 11,280 feet above sea level up here. And we've hit the snow line here in early June. So what we're gonna do, and this is a demonstration, this is the whole purpose of doing this, is we're gonna put chains on the Can-Am. We also, uh, we might actually put chains on this Unimog, and then we're gonna try to cut our way through the snow. What makes these guys special, Besides the little evil cleats here, is the ability to tension and change the, the tightness or looseness of the chain. In this situation, we'll run them somewhat loose, not tight with the little rubber bands, because what we're gonna want to have happen, <clears throat> the chains will flail, they'll hit the ground in front of us. These cleats will spread out across the ground. Just imagine this laid out like it is in the snow, and you try to stomp on it with your tire. It kind of holds it from sinking down and pushing into the snow. So if we run them loose, we get flotation. If we run them tight, we just have aggressive traction and we just dig down and we're stuck. Now guys, let me show you why we're chaining up. It's because this is the trail. We hit the snow line basically right now. And you can see at first it's really, really soft, wet snow. And then as you move forward, up, up and up, this is where somebody basically stopped, back down and left. But the, the trail goes all the way over the Continental Divide, this way. And could be two, three, four feet, we don't know. I interrupt this video for this week's TFL Bids Bargain. As you know, we have many trucks and off-road SUVs for sale, but this one is a true, no expense spared Overland build. It's a 2006 Land Cruiser 100 series. ARB special. It's got special suspension, bumpers, a winch, and too many accessories to mention, including a fridge and a storage solution in the rear. Check it out, use the link below in the description. Bid on this one, and don't forget, you can submit your truck or SUV by clicking the submit a vehicle button right there on the site. Here's, it's about, what, 32 inches tire. The tire is up here. So that's about three feet. And you can see the belly pan right here. <laughs> You're on your belly. <laughs> You're on your belly, dude. Yeah. The Maverick, aka Batmobile. So we're just running a little bit bigger tire, a pretty aggressive tire, Roctanes. They don't get cut very easily. And then we're running a big set of German snow chains. They're sitting on the floor in case we need it. They're nasty net chains. We just lifted the suspension quite a bit higher, stock horsepower. So hopefully this guy, we could float over the top of these passes. That's my biggest concern. We have no winch but we have ratchet straps, so that's kind of the poor man's winch. All we did for the suspension lift is really, we are just cranked up the coils, that's all it was. We have a lot of armor underneath it. All we do when we, when we mess with the side-by-sides is we beef up the drivetrain, beef up things to keep them from breaking. They already have great horsepower, everybody wants more, but I break a lot of stuff. So keeping it as bulletproof as possible. We got lights galore, we got a sound system in there, so if it does get dark, we should be able to make it our goal is to get up over these big, uh, these big piles of snow in the past to maybe get over to Breckeridge and not get struck by lightning. In the thunderstorm. In the thunderstorm in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> All 
right, guys, here comes the mob. Perfect. Yeah, this thing's a rock. Dude. dude, that's a beast. Dude. <laughs> that is, that is a beast. <laughs> okay, so we're attaching a strap through the back of this. Okay. Uh, we're going to try to pull back because the Maverick is beached, even with on 32s. 32 is a chain. And chained and lifted. Oh, oh easy. Oh, you need not go. Whoa, whoa, hold on. <laughs> you need not don't care. What do you think? Should we let the mark do this? I think so. Yeah, your main eight speeds here. That's how you can keep track of where you're at. Third, which you usually start off with road gears wise, and then you'll jump over to, I'll skip fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. But generally when we're off road, we'll be in third, second, or first. This little lever down here is the reverse lever. So I could reverse all of these gears, which is pretty cool. So if I need to rock out of a hole, forward, reverse, forward, reverse. And it is synchronized, so I could actually get a little momentum going back and forth. We've got a hand throttle here, so if you're on that steep hill and you're holding your foot on the brakes, you can hand throttle out of it so you don't have to do that weird heel to toe motion. And then we got two wheel drive, four, diff lock, front and rear. And everything's all pneumatically engaged, so straightforward on that. But there's another PTO selector that's down here. It's just a pneumatic switch. So we can run a ginormous generator. I could put 250 watt or 250 horsepower through a generator or a hydraulic pump or whatever you got. And then the rest of it's pretty much automotive. One thing to note though, that's kind of neat with the Unimog is everything's big buttons on this thing. That's for designed for if you got work gloves on, cause it's a, you know, it's an industrial machine for work and whatnot. So some people complain that they're a little loud or this or that, but it, yeah, it's, you know, it's a work truck that we make into a fun toy. All right guys, you see right there, this is where the Can-Am bucked down, sat in its belly and couldn't go anymore. Here it almost dug down, but not quiet. Mog. It had the clearance and it just didn't care. It just kept rotating the tires. That was awesome. Wow. This is where the second place where the Maverick got hung up. And as you can see, the Mog had the flotation. It has 44 inch tall tires by about 16 and a half inches wide. Miss King. Dude, that was burly going through the mob. But it just kept going. The Unimog, those wide tires, right? Yeah. You were actually higher in those tracks than the Maverick. Unbelievable. So you were floating. Isn't that insane? I told you before, we got to make that 14.6 float. <laughs> and we did do it. And that is the, oh, it's, it's that's the surprise. I couldn't believe it, it's, dude. It's insane. I'm telling you, it's these chains. The, they're not a bar chain, that grease egg chain, the way it's designed, yeah. cast down, it's a net, you drive on top of it. Evil. This is our smaller one, although it's tall. We built it narrower, so it's about uh, 10 inches narrower in the back end. You see it's flush with the body line. We had to run the big tree cage over it. This is so we could push through. The mirror's just easily tucked back in. Um, squeeze through the stuff, it's a narrower track. This is a factory all-wheel steering machine. The all-wheel steering is not working because there's a computer tied to it, which I hate computers, so, but anyway, you've got that available. We may make it mechanical later on. About 300 horsepower, was 160. Lots of illumination, uh, tough little bed. These are high-speed ag tires. You can go to Mexico and back, Baja and back, 5,000 mile run of these, and they, they're quiet and they're beautiful. Low gears, we're gonna have an overdrive in about next week, so we'll cruise around 75 next week. Uh, right now we cruise about 69. 
But it's a nice rig. Uh, 5.9 inline six, turbo diesel, intercooled. Uh, I think we're at about 18 inches of differential clearance underneath it. This does not have central tire inflation, unfortunately, but we're gonna work on something for that. And then I think right now it's just a eight speed. Oh my goodness. It's just of, an eight. <laughs> what is an eight? What? It'll what? be a 16, it'll be a 32 speed in about uh, four weeks with the overdrive and the working gear group. But first gear still, about 112 to one factory. That's plenty. That's plenty. It'll be, it will end up being that to around 600 and something to one uh, pretty soon and then that overdrive. But it's a cool rig. It's pretty, pretty, pretty badass. You build rigs like this, right? That's right. We do a whole, uh, we got a whole fleet of these things. Uh, you know, every one of them's a little bit different, but uh, this one is an extremely different one because of the factory all wheel steering and all that. And being a little narrower for these trails, which is still huge, but. All right, um, so what kind of a value are we talking about as far as some of the items on this rig? So this guy currently is probably, being the all wheel steer, HCL is really, really rare. So it's at least a $200,000 machine. We'll do another, with upgrades on this, we're sitting at two-ish. Uh, I got another maybe probably 35, 40 grand we're gonna put into it for a few other options and then we're done, you know. And then it's getting a house in the back. So all these bedsides will come off, the spare comes out, gets mounted on the rear, and we have a little uh, a mini house. So when we get here and we really screw up and we can't get out, we at least hang out inside and have some hot cocoa, potato chips, and maybe barbecue something and wait till the uh, weather gets better and go out. So the KM is around 30 grand probably? Uh, KM's pushing 30, yep. And then this is about 200. Yep, around two. But this will get you there. This. <laughs> Gets you there, gets you back, hauls everybody out, carries your house, carries your lumber from Home Depot, pulls your horse trailer, you know, plows your field. It's kind of hard to say no. The path keeps going. This one's got a side tilt to it. Can't believe it floating on this wet snow and just goes lockers all four wheels turning unbelievable hold up so you see those guys right there we left the canon maverick down there it's just overheating well not overheating but it's really hard for it to keep going so we're gonna try to go a little bit further in the Unimog but it's just unstoppable what else can I say there you have it Unimog wins the day even the heavy giant one and as always go back to tfloffroad.com for all the latest news views and real world it doesn't get any more real than this reviews so when does the Unimog care <laughs> it's getting close but so how tall are you I am 5'11", just under 5'11". Okay, right so it's going up to your armpit, kind of. It's getting there. It's right about there, yeah. We're, um, we're, we're about there. And All I'm right, staying dude. on some snow. So, Jay, can you tell me about this trailer? It's very unique. Yes, it is an interesting little trailer. It's called a T-Railer. Okay. Weighs a little under 600 pounds. That's the only reason we're able to get it up here is because it's a little baby thing. But what's cool about it is it has a varying... This basket here runs up and down a track, so your front axle stays in that. So if you have a very small side-by-side -side or ATV or a really long one, it could come all the way up to here. So it fits everything. It weighs under 600 pounds and it breaks down to pieces so I can mail it across country. It's got a portal axle set up because we are MOG people and everything has portal <laughs> axles with us. Okay. So get some better ground clearance and then it's got true unit bearings instead of cruddy trailer bearings. We're just kind of playing out with different things. We're trying to keep it as light as possible. Everybody gives me a, a ton of crap for not having monster tires, but the portals really doesn't need it. And the lighter it is, the more responsive it is. And on the highway, it's pretty easy, right? Super stable, super stable. So how do you unload this? We're gonna find out. Okay. Yeah, so I see the modular construction here. So if you see this kind of center, uh, beam, I guess, and you can mount these That's right. and slide them around. That's right. right. You could, uh, just like you said, this will bolt onto this main section. That axle unbolts from that and could be moved back or forward, depending on how long of a load you've got. And then that front basket also unbolts or slides off the back. And then the whole thing folds in half. So you can stand it up and put it up against your wall. So for the, you guys that are 
up to your debt, up to your eyeballs in debt because you live with grandma and yeah. you got your uh, loan to buy this. Now in the HOA, you could hide this in grandma's garage and not get in trouble. Awesome. <laughs> So basically you drive into it in two wheel drive, over that, onto that little fender, into this basket, and you hit this stop, and then it pulls, and it goes up to wherever your wheel wheels land, then in reverse, two wheel drive, important. Goes back through, sorry. It locks right there. So that's basically it. Not the best demonstration, but gotcha. that's the principle.